Cryptocurrency and NFTs. These much despised buzzwords weaseled their way into the gaming industry in 2021, and somehow they still haven't left. Remember how they said NFTs would let you bring a pickaxe from Minecraft into Call of Duty? Obviously, that never happened, but desperate crypto bros never got the message. Asset flips, Ponzi schemes, and broken promises form the holy trinity of the perfect crypto game. With Steam having placed an outright ban on anything crypto or NFT related, these unregulated investment schemes have been relegated to the bowels of the PC gaming marketplace, the Epic Game Store. It's hard to be unbiased at this point. I've played well over 50 crypto games, and not a single one of them has justified a rating higher than 5 out of 10. But stunning advancements in AI technology have introduced a whole new wave of internet slop. It was only a matter of time before the crypto bros got their hands on a mid-journey subscription. And oh boy do they love this thing. But I'm John. I still make content the old-fashioned way, which means it's time for another diarrheal deep dive. I've carefully chosen six brand new crypto games from the Epic Game Store for today's video. My selection method was simple. Type blockchain in the search bar and download the results in alphabetical order. Besides, Tim Epic said that they wouldn't allow crappy games on their platform, so how bad can they be? One of them features such egregious copyright infringement that they preemptively shut their whole website down just from seeing my face in their Discord. Yeah, it's gonna be a good episode. Awaken is a fighting game and open-world metaverse built on Ethereum blockchain. Within Awaken Immersive Gaming World, players will have a chance to immerse themselves in the traditional combat that domain with real interactions real interaction seamlessly, seamlessly integrated into the metaverse. metaverse. The store page features no gameplay footage at all, or screenshots, just four seemingly AI-generated images. After launching the game and signing up for an account, my eyes are immediately cursed with the image of a smooth, nude man. Looking to the top right of my screen, I noticed that I was assigned a Bored Ape NFT as an avatar. Funny, NFT bros are now stealing from each other. Aside from the profile page, none of the other menu options seem to do anything at all. They all say, the feature will be available in later version of the game. We apologize. This leaves us with only one working option, fight. Now, it looks like my clothes finally started rendering, thank god. Pressing this button transports us to some sort of hub world, devoid of any life. Aside from the advertisements plastered everywhere, there's a terminal in the center where we can queue up for a match. I can guarantee that there is not a single other player online, so instead of waiting in the queue forever, let's try a custom match. Hmm, can't do that either. It still requires two players. It's worth noting that this game is a total resource hog, despite there being nothing going on. I thought that it might have some sort of crypto miner, but after digging through the files, I didn't find anything suspicious. Just two gigabytes of Unreal Marketplace assets, the crypto game standard. With nothing else to see in game, it's time to turn to their website and social media pages. Equally confusing, as even here, there's still no gameplay footage. Even their Discord server is devoid of any conversation, it contains nothing but a few hundred people who spam GM every few hours. Awaken is a strange ghost town of a game. But don't worry, they'll be releasing their very own NFT collection and token soon, so make sure to invest. Somebody already did. Negative 100 out of 10. Blade Right is a multiplayer melee battle royale game. Up to 20 players fight in a magical style arena, with only one survivor in the end. Developed by the Singapore based Lu Shang PTE LTD, Blade Right is currently available in an open beta state on both mobile and desktop platforms. Whoa, check out those jiggle physics. They sure got their priorities straight. Generally, I'm not much of a fan of mobile games ported to PC, especially when they don't bother to rescale the UI. Blade Wright is no exception, as it's plain to see that their priority was in creating a mobile-first experience. That being said, I'd be lying if I said that this was unplayable. While unpolished, the core gameplay is actually pretty smooth. The controls work just fine on a keyboard and mouse, and if it wasn't for the oversized UI elements, this could pass as a PC exclusive. The game begins with an introductory tutorial, explaining the different types of attacks, special abilities, and craftable items. Blade Wright is your typical battle royale, mixed with a minor MOBA element. 20 players drop into a map with a shrinking safe zone, and the last man standing wins. Combat is strictly melee, and you have the ability to dodge, roll, and block attacks. Each one of the game's classes also has a unique ultimate ability that can be activated once you fill up this flame bar. The bar is filled by dealing damage, either to other players or one of the many NPC enemies scattered across the map. My character's ultimate allows me to turn completely invisible, which is overpowered, especially since you can continue to fill your flame bar while hidden, which allows you to basically stay invisible as long as you keep attacking. But I'm pretty sure that every match was against bots. 
all enemies have a complete lack of object permanence, and as soon as I went invisible, they would just turn around and walk away. As I mentioned earlier, Blade Right has a bit of a MOBA element. Before each match, you can select a few items to take with you into battle. These items have a variety of effects, such as increasing your damage, health, or armor. However, you don't just get these effects for free. Each match, you'll need to kill the NPCs that spawn in the map to gain currency. This currency is then used to activate one of the items. These items are gained through opening reward chests, which are randomly dropped from NPCs in matches or as rewards for winning. Chests require a key to open, which can be purchased using the game's premium currency, gold. But this gold currency isn't even a crypto, it's just your regular old microtransaction. They even offer a variety of different purchase sizes, although unlike most games, they don't give you a discount if you purchase in bulk. Oh, you recommend the $400 package? Of course you do. You can craft and upgrade items outside of a match to increase their power, and you can also trade them on the in-game marketplace. However, this doesn't use crypto either. It uses gold. So what about this game uses crypto? I'm actually not too sure. Their website features an NFT collection, but these appear to just be your run-of-the-mill randomly generated JPEGs. It looks like they have some items that you can buy using the Solana cryptocurrency, but there's only five for sale and there doesn't appear to be any purchase volume. While on their website, I noticed that Battlerite has a partnership with G2 Esports, and they have some videos of a tournament that they held a while back. Esports orgs and crypto sponsors, where have I heard that before? Anyway, I highly doubt that any G2 members actually play this game any more than their contractually obligated minimum. Returning to the game, I continued to browse through the available features, but found myself quite confused. There is a lot going on, but not much is explained. The translation is also pretty bad, with some dialogue boxes just being in Chinese. In the end, this is really nothing to write home about. There are dozens of these mobile battle royale games, and I'm not in the target audience. But does a game like this really need crypto? No, of course not, but we already knew that, especially when they already have a fully functioning cash shop and marketplace without it. But Blade Right is far from the worst crypto game I've ever played. I'll give it a 4 out of 10. It's not really my type of game, and it seems like it could easily become pay to win, but I'm sure somebody out there will play this. It's unplayable. In all seriousness, Blade of God X is the sequel to the mobile game Blade of God Varger Souls. Unfortunately, it is only accessible during designated test periods, and apparently, I just missed one. So, we can't play it, but we can watch some gameplay footage on YouTube. Yep, this is definitely a video game. A bit of a sensory overload, it feels more like dangling keys in front of a baby than anything seriously engaging. The original Blade of God mobile game doesn't have the best reviews on the App Store, and it seems like it's filled with microtransactions. Regardless, since this is currently unplayable, I can't give a detailed opinion. Maybe I'll come back later. Probably not. Vag Strike by Dislocate Games is the first Web3 multiplayer arena shooter that allows gamers and creators to play, create, and own custom worlds in-game. Oh boy, create, play, and own. We've only heard that like, what, 50 times now? Unfortunately, with most crypto games having a player base smaller than the average Roblox lobby, there isn't much for user-generated content. Besides, crypto bros aren't exactly known for being artistic, creative, or original. The screenshots and trailers on the store page paint a very confusing picture. All of the gameplay footage looks quite competent. This is very polished for a crypto game, especially one as obscure as this. The artwork, on the other hand, is all fresh off the mid-journey presses. What gives? Now that I look a bit closer, I think the characters on the logo are all AI generated too. Curious. Anyway, what's the harm in another crypto miner on my computer? At least someone's using my graphics card to its fullest. Launching the game brings us directly to a character creation page. Strangely, the player model doesn't match the game's artwork at all. Now that I've selected my player model and weapon loadout, let's try and connect to a game of Vag Strike. Seems like there's only one server, and there are zero players. I guess this is some sort of testing map? I don't really know. Let's try and start a bot match, then maybe at least we can see how the game plays. What the hell? This is actually really good. It's like a modernized version of Quake, but with parkour. The gunplay is quick and responsive, the AI is actually competent, and the art direction is slick and cohesive. Somebody pinch me, I must be dreaming. A good crypto game? But after about 20 minutes of playing against bots, I started to get suspicious. 
The VAD strike and dislocate decals placed around the map seem really out of place. Also, why would they make all of their promotional material with AI if they actually had real artists? And most importantly, this is actually a great game. A crypto bro could never. This skepticism led me to delve further into the game's files. If they just stole some other game and slapped the Bad Strike label on it, then maybe they left some evidence behind. Interestingly, there's a file named Steam App ID, despite this game being from the Epic Game Store. Opening it shows an App ID of 967460, Red Eclipse. Hey, this is Bad Strike. No, wait, the other way around. Bad Strike is Red Eclipse. Red Eclipse is an open source, free, and community created first person shooter that's been consistently updated for over 15 years. Vad Strike literally just copied the entire source code from Red Eclipse. This is the most despicable example of crypto slop I've ever seen. But what do they intend to gain here? Let's dive a bit deeper. Vad Strike is listed as being developed by a company called Dislocate Games, which I've certainly never heard of. A visit to the Vag.pro homepage results in an AI-generated ocular assault. My god. They've used every buzzword in the book to describe the open source and modular Vag engine, which they absolutely did not create. But they must be pretty popular, since their official Discord server has exactly 10,053 members. Wow, what a specific number. It's almost like they purchased 10,000 bots and then had 53 real members join, especially since the majority of these accounts were created on October 14th. The same logic can be applied to their Twitter page of over 37,000 followers. Jumping back to their website and ignoring the horrendous AI art, we can look at some of the other things they have to offer. First up, the official Vag comic. This abomination features 85 worthless pages of AI-generated slop, coupled with text taken directly from the official lore of Red Eclipse. Nevertheless, the fierce battle continues for the remnants of what was once the most powerful consortium in the galaxy in the system of the Red Vage. As far as the crypto aspect of the game goes, there's actually nothing currently for sale. However, they do mention a future token and NFT collection launch. Going further, it quickly becomes apparent that just about every aspect of Vag Strike is copied directly from Red Eclipse. Even the gameplay guide is a word-for-word -word copy of Red Eclipse's, except it has a bunch of broken links. Oh, and their white paper has artwork from Dead Space in it. That's not open source. Anyway, there's a section on the website labeled Team, so let's take a look at the likely fake faces behind this project. Vag Strike is being brought to life by Dislocate Games, a next-generation gaming studio founded by an all-star team of gaming and software veterans with combined decades of extensive experience in building and shaping consumer products in incredible games like Haunted Dungeon, Rise of Realms, Dino Wars, and Beatrice Apostrophe Island. <sighs> Jeez, I thought I was verbose. That sentence had 52 words. Below this boldface lie are the six bold faces of the thieves behind this project. Without any LinkedIn pages or last names, it's impossible to verify if any of these are real people. Given what we've seen so far, it's more likely that these are all AI-generated portraits, or stock images. But we'll come back to this in a moment. Taking a step forward to the official Dislocate Games website, we can take a look at some of their previous projects. According to them, these are the products that their team has worked on over the past decade. I guess I was wrong, they really do have some development skills. Just kidding. Every single one of these games are just stolen open source projects. Rise of Realms, while unplayable, features a screenshot from the open source RTS game Zero AD. Haunted Dungeon is actually a game called The House by Archer Cott. All they did was modify the code to remove any mention of the original author, although they forgot to rename the browser tab. And Beatrice Apostrophe Island is another open source project, a game called Edelweiss by Felix Mariotto. While the repackaging of these open source games is technically legal, it's ethically dubious, especially when you consider that Dislocate is preparing a $2 million fundraising campaign based on work that they didn't do. Let's jump back to those fake team members. One of these is not like the other. Gideon K. There's a link to Gideon's very own website where he shares a heartwarming story of his life as a Nigerian entrepreneur. There is a list of all the companies that he's founded, although not all of them seem to link to active websites. The first, called Ravel, advertises itself as an invoicing platform. I signed up for an account, only to find that the website has no discernible functionality aside from asking you for your credit card info. A subscription to this service costs $1,000 a month. His next website, called Grammy.co, is some sort of platform for selling WordPress templates. 
This website in itself is an almost completely unmodified WordPress template. How did I figure this out? Well, Gideon forgot to remove the YouTube button on the website, which links to the homepage of redq.io, where you can purchase this website template. If you're gonna copy the homework, at least remember to change the name. But just pointing and laughing at such a blatant ripoff isn't enough. If Epic Games isn't moderating their own storefront, then maybe I can help them out. Yo, dude, they stole your entire game. What? Hang on. Quinn is the lead developer of Red Eclipse, his pride and joy for the past 15 years. After informing him that someone had stolen his entire game and relabeled it as their own, we decided to play a little prank. We jumped into the VAD Strike Discord and asked if we could speak to their lead developer. This must have scared them a bit, as within 30 minutes they had deleted the VAD Strike Twitter and website entirely, attempting to cover up any evidence of copyright infringement. Unfortunately for them, we had already archived everything. Gideon immediately recognized Quinn as the game's true developer, and he sent him a private message. In an attempt to save face, Gideon offered to bring Quinn on as an advisor for VAD Strike, offering a cut of the success that the game might see. As an important side note, Red Eclipse is licensed under the Attribution Sharealike license. This means that you can freely modify, alter, or sell any part of Red Eclipse. It's an open source game owned and built by the community. All that matters is that if you do copy Red Eclipse, you give proper attribution to the original creators. Vag Strike did not do this. Instead, they removed all mentions of the original license and instead claimed that they built Vag Strike themselves. This alone would be more than enough for Quinn to file a copyright takedown. But to make things even worse, they replaced all of the credits for the game's custom community-created maps, saying that they were all created by Dislocate Games. So not only are they taking credit for the work of the core developers, they're taking credit for the maps created by the community. These guys are actually so lazy that they didn't even manage to fully scrub the Red Eclipse logo, and it could be found in multiple places in Bad Strike. Even the screenshots on the Epic Game Store listing are stolen. These are all taken directly from the Red Eclipse Steam community page. But Quinn is a smart guy, and he knows that nobody would ever play Vag Strike anyway. We can actually see just how many people play the game, since they're all connecting to Red Eclipse's main server. Yeah, that's right. They couldn't even figure out how to run their own servers for their stolen game. Aside from a few connections from Nigeria, only a few real players actually joined the server. They all wandered around for a few seconds, said WTF in chat, and then disconnected. Far from the 12,000 players that Vag Strike brags about. Since Vag Strike is based on a fork of the Red Eclipse source code and runs on the Red Eclipse servers, Quinn was able to push an update to Vag Strike, unbeknownst to the scammers. So now, as soon as you try and connect to a server, the game locks up, presenting a pop up message redirecting you to Red Eclipse. Then the game closes, becoming permanently bricked and unplayable. All you can ever do is view this message or close the game. Sorry, Vag Strike, but didn't your parents ever teach you not to steal? If anything, this is an endorsement for the impressive quality of Red Eclipse. Most open source games are pretty bare bones, but Red Eclipse is legitimately a very fun game. And if it wasn't for the laughing stock that is Vag Strike, I never would have discovered it and the awesome community behind it. So consider this an official John endorsement for Red Eclipse, and what perfect timing too. They just released the long anticipated 2.1 update, which I've been playing all week. They even added me as a character to the game. Give it a try, it's on Steam and it's free. Strap on your irons, saddle up, and make the Wild West yours in the world's first Web3 Battle Royale. Would you look at that? It's published by our old favorites, Gala Games. I've already reviewed three games that Gala published, and two out of those three are currently suing Gala. But we'll talk more about that another time. Let's stick to Grit. This game was pretty hyped up back in the earlier days of crypto gaming, and it caught a bit of flack for selling $1,000 NFT horses. At the time, Grit was unplayable, as it was still in development, but it looks like the game finally launched in 2023, so let's give it a try. After downloading 35 gigabytes of content, I launched Grit and successfully reached the main menu. I then logged into my Gala Games account, and nothing happened. Server error. I tried a bunch more, but it would fail every time. Maybe it's down for maintenance? Heading over to the game's Discord server reveals that this is an issue everyone's experiencing. Apparently, the servers have been down for about a month, and there's been no communication from the dev team regarding a resolution. Heading back in time a bit, it would appear that there have actually been no updates since March 2023. But don't worry, you can still buy NFT weapons and horses, or loot boxes. 
I'm not usually one to speculate, but given Gala's terrible reputation and track record for screwing over their devs, I would imagine that there's some sort of dispute going on behind the scenes. It's likely that the Grit team has just given up and abandoned the project. One of the great benefits of blockchain technology is its immutability, which means that there are no takebacks or refunds. But don't worry, because you can use that horse or gun NFT in another game. Oh, wait, you can't? Oh no, whoops. Gala Scams strikes again. Red Chaos is an almost entirely unmodified build of the Unreal Engine Lyra starter template with swapped out assets. The game's description is a borderline illegible wall of text without paragraph breaks, and the preview screenshots look like an asset pack showcase. The login screen, which ironically requests my Web2 email address, features a T-posing player model against a gradient background. They are looking for $5.85 million in funding and are offering tokens that promise a return on investment through staking. According to their entirely AI-generated white paper, their team has worked on such titles as The Saints Row Remake, Battlefield 2042, and Payday 3. Not exactly the type of experience that I would be flaunting. There is no information about any of these developers, nor any real names associated with the project. The only info I could discern is that they are Russian, since that's the language their website defaults to. Negative 12 out of 10. Arcbound is a Japanese-style hash-and-slack action RPG built in Unreal 5 with the support of blockchain technology. No, this is crypto slop. It's a top-down action RPG, like Path of Exile or Diablo, except if it was made by a second grader. It's playable, but it's lacking in just about every aspect. The UI is archaic and poorly translated from Japanese, and the combat is repetitive at best. I only played the game for 30 minutes, but within that time, I don't think I ever took damage once. The enemy AI only ever focuses on your NPC party members, who act as bullet sponges. The artwork isn't half bad, but the audio is grating. Absolute silence would have been way more enjoyable than this bootleg Link shouting over endlessly looping music. Fittingly, Arcbound offers a tremendously uninspired gameplay loop, barren of any originality. Non-differentiable, randomly arranged dungeons and a hub world with endless fetch quests. I guess there's something to do with NFTs somewhere in this trash heap, but I couldn't stomach it for long enough to figure it out. After clearing my already flooded hard drive of Arcbound's 2GB footprint, I headed to the game's website to learn more about the project. Yeah, who am I kidding? I don't give a shit about any of this, neither do you. These crypto craps just blend together at this point. Always the same, sell the bare minimum product at a premium price, hoping that gung-ho, short-sighted marks pile in. Surprisingly, Arcbound seems to be getting called out in their own Discord server, where a player noticed an interesting coincidence. Seven years ago, an early access title by the name of Obsidian Legacy, except with a C instead of an S, flopped its way onto Steam. The game received an average score of mostly negative, due to its unfinished and buggy state. This is the exact same game as Arcbound, cover art and all. They literally dove into the landfill, grabbed the game, and hosed it down with crypto. This is exactly why I love making these videos. I never even have to make anything up or exaggerate. The truth is almost too ridiculous to believe. The jokes write themselves. Anyway, this game sucks. I'd rather unscrew 20 lug nuts with my bare hands than ever think about this again. Thanks for watching today's episode of Crypto Slop Showcase. I owe a huge thanks to the team behind Red Eclipse for not only building a game worth stealing, but for helping make the lives of crypto scammers a little bit harder. And to you all, the Bag Holders Club, for keeping the channel afloat. Your unwavering conviction will surely be enough to save the ever-plummeting price of John Coin. Last I checked, we finally surpassed 16 decimal places. Impressive work. Goodbye.